Black Hebrew Israelites, man. Uh, what's up with y'all? What's up with y'all? I'm from New York. Uh, so I'm very, very, very familiar with these people. So I'm going to give my assessment of these brothers, man, because I feel like they have no swag. They corny, right? And they have no great leadership. And they have no sense of direction they just like not jiggy just they have no swag they have no swag They just like not jiggy, just not lit. Just like not jiggy, just not lit. I do feel like our people are special. Reason being is because genetically, genetically, if people are not gonna lie, I don't, I haven't personally taken any uh, accounts other than my, oh wait, other than my own penis. But some even say that we naturally have the biggest penises in the world. Our women, when they got it together, in my personal opinion, are the best looking women in the world. Black Hebrew Israelites, I remember seeing them all the time on 125th Street and in the Bronx, right? And they whole spiel, their whole call to action is, uh, they are the chosen people from uh, one of the 12 tribes of Judah. First of all, nobody knows when Armageddon is coming, if it's coming, right? And nobody knows for sure if white people are the chosen people. All we know is that they got some type of power now. Kingdoms gain power and lose power within hundreds of years. Uh, white folk got their turn right now, but guess what? Chinese people are the richest people in the in the world now. You know what I'm saying? Uh, for a fact, my father's side of the family were real black Jews, real black Jews, and they they dressed like regular people. They didn't dress like these kilt wearing like goofy dudes who want to be in costume like the Commodores in the 70s. My father's side of the family was real Jews. So who are these new niggas? Who, who don't know nothing about being Jews, none of that, you know what I'm saying? Like, my father's side of the family was Jews until they converted to Islam. Like, my father's side of the family was Jews until they converted to Islam. Like, my father's side of the family was Jews until they converted to Islam. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Racha Ha Kwadash. And double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Also, a sincere shalom to you other brethren. Honors to you brethren who's following the truth. Uh, okay, and shalom to you few sisters. And uh, mainly, and you followers of the truth. And mainly, let me say shalom to the elect. Anyway, um, I kind of rolled through these videos. So I don't really remember the title. Okay, here it is. Black Hebrew Israelites have no swag, no women, no sense of direction. So, I'll go into this video a little bit. Uh, with swag, as I put in there, it means um, uh, basically, I, I don't have it back up. Basically, um, to, 
to 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 take unlawfully, right? But in a sense, the way it's used now is uh, basically spirit, right? Basically, say we have no spirit because why? We don't have the spirit of this world. Um, the scriptures says in John two, uh, first John two and fifteen, love not the world, neither the, uh, or anything in the world. If any man love the world, the love of, I'm just quoting, the love of the Father is not in him, right? So he says, uh, the Israelites uh, dress like the Commodores, and I don't see any Israelites dressing like the Commodores, but guess what? They, hey, they know that that's, that's a form of royalty. When you're able to be up on stage, and it, it that's nothing new. I mean, that's not old, they're still doing it. When you see them in those videos, even in his era, they'll show them in those videos in them white suits and all decked out and sharp, tailor-made clothes. So I, I don't know what the hell he's talking about. So the men of ancient was wearing that. Well, let's go to, let's get a scripture. We wasn't wearing neckties and stuff like that, man. <laughs> okay. At least uh, not the men of the Lord. Okay. So let's go to Isaiah. 52 and 1 it says awake awake put on thy strength O Zion put on thy beautiful garments O Jerusalem the holy city right it does it doesn't mean just spectacular beautiful garments but put on that beautiful spiritual garment for henceforth there shall no more come unto thee the uncircumcised and the unclean right because we're changing the way we live we're no longer you know going to accept eating swine we're no longer going to accept eating crabs and shrimp and their oppressors know that it's unhealthy right that you're not supposed to eat that okay so anyway um i don't know this guy has uh, a warped way of what he perceived the israelites to be and what we are to follow right so they have no clue no identity all they know is they want to protect this man in this system. That's the only thing in his mind. Right? But then he sneaks in there talking about we have bigger rods and things like that. Which really, it would be a national thing. You would you would have people of all nations who would be gifted. Or who look like other nations. Let me say that. That are Israelites who are gifted in athletics and things of that nature. So to speak. You know, if you want to look at it like that. It's not just black people. And this is the... Uh, this is the sickness of Israelite groups who practice the black and white thing, right? And this is why we don't have much controversy at camp because we'll get people who look like Moab or come up and agree with what we're saying and, uh, and they would understand that they're po possibly Israelites, right? And he goes on to say our women are better looking than all women on the planet. You know, you can't say that either. And, oh, you can say that, but they, they would more likely be Israelite women. It's, it's nice looking women in all nations. They were women. That's what they were created for. <clears throat> right? They were created uh, to be, a, a, you know, be with a man. Right? Let me say that. So, he uh, makes fun of us in uh, our attire. You know, you know, it's easy to make this guy look like he do. This is not hard work. But I guarantee you his people was up in those Commodore concerts. <laughs> anyway, he also goes into, let me read another scripture first before I continue. Ecclesiastes 10 and 13. The beginning of the words of his mouth is foolishness, and the end of his talk is mischievous and madness, right? And when you look up that word mischievousness, it means an evil, evilness, wicked, right? Wicked. So he, he's not looking forward to this place to go down, right? He's going to be sitting there saying, if it goes down, which you understand empires have fallen. He said that. One minute he says, we're, this is, he's a double-minded, you know, he's a double-minded uh, man, you know. This guy is driven by pure negative energy, negative emotion. One minute he says, that uh, we're, we, we, he believes we're special people because we're genetics. Our genetics help us to help live on this earth. But then the next minute he says that this man, you know, the man that's running the world is the cho can be the chosen. 
right? This is why we, we a guy like this that would come up to the camp, we would dismiss him before he starts, you know? Because it's not worth it. You're not going to get anywhere with a guy like that, man. Okay, but we do these videos just for the edification. Okay, just for the edification to show you Deuteronomy 28 and 28 that our people shall be smitten with madness and blindness and astonishment, which goes to stupef stupefaction, right? Which goes stupefaction is stupid in, in that word. Okay, let's go to 1 Samuel 2 and 7. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. This is how we know this is all the, the work of the Lord. Because the Lord is the one that bring you up and bring you down, right? If that was the case, the Assyrians, the Assyrian Babylonians should still be in power. They should still be running earth. Because remember, throughout the years, they had the technology. Just like this man has the technology, right? And how is he going to go down, <clears throat> right? With the uh, intervening of the Lord, <clears throat> okay? Verse 8, he raises up the poor out of the dust and lifts up the beggar out of the dunghill, right? Them, them going back to Petra, right? Eat them. It says to set them set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory for the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he have set the world upon them, right? So what we see here with this guy is an example of Christianity. He has lost the little faith he had in Cesarea. And now he thinks it's all a joke, right? But for all the wickedness that's going on in the Christian church, all the... Um, Lost, <clears throat> lost hopes, all the uh, false promises, false prophets, all the hurt that's going on in the, in the black, so-called black community where these ghetto churches are built and the thievery of, of people stealing, these pastors stealing, possibly, I'm going to say possibly, his mother and father and possibly his family members, the elders of his family, they just took all his money took all their money, probably had some bad Christmases or whatever, but he has nothing to say about the Christian church. The very people who are standing up and fighting against tyranny and wickedness and evilness that's perpetuated throughout the planet, he got a problem with. You know why? Because he loves McDonald's. He loves Burger King. He loves uh, Seafood Sea House, right? He loves all that stuff, man. He loves Christmas with the Christmas spirit right <laughs> which that is evil that's an evil spirit so we could clearly see you know this guy it does doesn't have what it's it's not hard to see that this guy and who he is man um he also says his father is a jew so first of all if you know what a, a, a being a jew is it's an inherited right it's who you are you just can't flip it on and off like that man his father probably really is or may have knew some ties to being one, but he didn't know he was a full-fledged Israelite. He might have knew he was a Jew, but he didn't know what it meant to be one. That's why he converted to Islam. That's why he lost it, right? That's, that's why he lost his way. He tried to enter in some other way. In fact, let's get that real quick. Let's go to... Uh, Matthew 7 and 13. Enter ye in the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way. Right? Let me make sure I got the right, yeah, that's the right translation. Uh, broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many uh, there be which go uh, in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the, is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there um, there be that find it. So you have an example where you see this big opening and everybody flocks to it and think that that's the way to go. But nah, it's that little gate, little entrance that you barely squeeze through to make it. That's why the scripture says the righteous shall scare, scarcely make it. It's not going to be that easy to get to the kingdom. So you can't just say, hey, I'm a Jew and that's all it is. And what happened? And that's why the Lord uh, cut him off. Because, it, 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 hey, 
you're going to have, the scripture says, um, uh, what's the scripture say? There, there's quite a few scriptures on that where he's, he's thinking that he's going to make it, but he's, you know, it doesn't mean you're going to make it, right? It also says many shall run to and fro, right? Ever learning, there's so, so many scriptures, ever learning but never able to uh, come into the knowledge. So that was just a fad for them. Many shall say to me, Lord, Lord, but shall not enter into the kingdom. So it's going to be a lot of people who know the Israelites, but that don't mean they're going to make it. Lord will and I make it. And, they, you know, the elect will make it. It's just a matter who the elect is. So we are humble with that. But this guy openly think just being a Jew is just some fad. And that's what Jake is making it. You know? Understanding that he has an issue with us being Israelites. But you got to understand that that's why we, you know, we're wearing these garments. And we're wearing the borders of blue. We're doing what the Most High told us to do. He's that heckler that would have had a problem with Yahweh Shai. Jeremiah 17 and 4, and even thou thyself shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in a land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever. This is why this guy never pulled a scripture, and even if he did pull a Bible verse, you know, it wouldn't matter, because this guy can just never get it. I don't know why these guys just don't go on with their lives. We're not bothering you. We on the street corner. We're teaching. Why? Why do they have such a problem? Because in the, in, the, in the last days, perilous times shall come. Uh, scoffers walking after their own lust, and this is these guys. We're standing against, as Jeremiah twenty-eight and eight says, the prophets that prophesy against war and kingdoms and pestilence. We're standing against it, and these guys, they're the ones that want to keep it alive. So if the chariots came. These guys will be the ones shooting bullets at the chariots. They will pull out their little 9 millimeters and try to shoot at the chariots, man. Why? Because they love it. Right? They love to have it so. They love it here, man. They don't want to leave. That's why he doesn't want uh, an apocalypse. <laughs> he, uh, he got his leather or pleather couch or vinyl couch. I don't know what it is. That's all I have on that, Shalom.